Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the Dominican community. Welcome to the extended Dominican community. On stage, you will see a collection of deans and department heads that you usually only see at commencement in regalia. And that seems somehow appropriate today, because although it is not graduation, I think it is a singular moment in the history of the university. And it's very appropriate that we hold that as a community. So on stage this morning, we have Ed Kajawa, the interim provost, and also the Dean of Education and Counseling Psychology, Nicola Pitchford, the Dean of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, Dan Mashavi, the Dean of the School of Business and Leadership, Ching Hua Wang, Dean of Health and Natural Sciences, Martha Nelson, the Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, from our Health and Natural Sciences Department, Barbara Ganley, the Associate Dean, Sibdas Ghosh, the Department Chair of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, Anita Hunter, the Department Chair of Nursing, and Ruth Ramsey, the Department Chair of Occupational Therapy. I'm also pleased to welcome representatives from the greater Marin and San Francisco Bay Area. Also joining us are Dr. Larry Meredith, the Director of the Department of Health and Human Services for the County of Marin, Gary Phillips, our own mayor here in San Rafael, representatives from the offices of U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer, State Senator Mark Leno, and U.S. Congresswoman, still, Lynn Woolsey. Thank you all for coming. Now you will notice among this array of dignitaries and academic leaders that there are actually two empty seats on the stage. They will, in short order, be filled. But first I want to tell you about the background for the gift that I'm about to announce and for the reasons uh, behind the gift and who will fill those two seats. So let me tell you a little bit about the origins of a truly extraordinary moment in the history of Dominican. I, I believe that we learn from our past and together we shape the future. I, I think that's the basic creed of nearly any institution and today, together, we have the privilege of enacting that creed. Dominican is over a century old and like any institution of significant years, there are certain signature moments that have defined our existence. You know some of these moments, but let's think about them together. Our founding in 1890 was quite literally an act of faith. Not only religious faith, but faith in the value and the meaning and the purpose of higher education. The college received its first major gift in 1918, the gift of Meadowlands Mansion. In the 1940s, Dominican was an educational haven in the midst of a world war, educating young women from Hawaii all the way across the West Coast, the Midwest, and the East Coast. In the 1960s, Dominican students joined with others across the country in challenging convention, even as they embraced some classic traditions. Dominican admitted its first male undergraduates in 1971. In 1979, the college separated from the church while holding fast to the Dominican values of study, reflection, community, and service. In 2000, Dominican College became Dominican University, expanding our vision and our ambition for the new century. So from 1890 to the present, Dominican evolved. So did the Bay Area, so did this region. So while Dominican was being established in San Rafael in the 1890s, the Michael H. D. Young family, one of the first families of San Francisco and the founders of the San Francisco Chronicle, was also discovering the attractions of San Rafael, particularly in the summer. So in 1888, the family began building a summer cottage adjacent to the emerging Dominican College, a space they called Meadowlands. Archival photos show several generations of the de Young family fully enjoying the grounds and the climate with expressions and dress that harken back to the gold rush and that anticipate the Roaring Twenties. So as the de Young family and its residences grew, and as they watched their neighbor, Dominican College, grow as well, a partnership was formed. In 1918, Dominican College received its first major gift, the receipt of Meadowlands Mansion 
from the family of Michael H. DeYoung. Now technically, if you look in the archives, you find that the building was actually purchased from the DeYoungs for the sum of $10. <laughs> but even if we think about inflation, that exchange represents you know, possibly an appalling lack of real estate acumen, uh, but most likely a major gift to Dominican. We will assume it was a major gift. The full motivation behind the exchange is somewhat lost to history, although we've had wonderful conversations in recent weeks with the de Young family. But the effect of that gift has been tangible and significant. It's a gracious mansion in the midst of a park-like setting to use for the college's expansion. It is a space that has played host to student residences, cutting-edge research, and community outreach and service for over 90 years. So just as Dominican College and the de Young family found opportunity in the Bay Area in the 1800s, a young man named Rolf Lewis and his family found a rebirth in San Francisco a generation later. The Lewis family arrived in the Bay Area from Shanghai immediately after the Second World War. They had almost nothing except for the profound fact of their own survival through a terrible world tragedy. Through their own astounding commitment to work, faith in the opportunity represented by this country and this region, and a belief in human connection, they established a robust new life for themselves in the Bay Area. As opportunity transformed into success and business yielded more resources than they had imagined, they also began to reflect on their journey to this country. They began to discuss how they would give back to the place that had given them a chance for a new life. That reflection and their gratitude for the opportunity this region offered at a time of great turmoil allows us today at Dominican to announce a great act of generosity. So through this entwined history, the history of Dominican, the history of the de Young family, the history of the Lewis family, we are once again making history at Dominican. Today, I am proud to announce the largest gift in the history of Dominican University, an $8 million plus gift from the Rolf Lewis family to renovate Meadowlands Hall into a state-of-the-art health sciences complex. That's the history, so let me tell you a little bit about the gift itself. It is major in scale. It is major in what it asks of this community. In short, we have earned the trust of this family in the region, but we must continue to earn it. So the gift includes a launching component of $2 million right away, which will allow us to begin work on Meadowlands very soon. It includes a mashing component of $2.5 million. For this portion to be realized, our alumni, our faculty, our staff, our board, and our friends must give $2.5 million, and the Lewis family will match those gifts dollar for dollar. It includes an estimated $4 million bequest, which will be used to ensure this legacy, this generosity, this vision lives in perpetuity. To receive a gift of this scope is indeed extraordinary, and it also carries with it a responsibility and a challenge. This campus, this community, at this moment, has the opportunity not only to receive a gift, but to define health sciences for the 21st century. We have the opportunity to benefit from enormous generosity in, it, in the process to transform this university. We will renovate a facility while we're creating a health sciences program for the contemporary age. We will integrate disciplines and schools from across the university to respond to major policy, educational, and health concerns of the era. We will meet the philanthropic challenge involving the entire Dominican community in raising funds to meet the matching portion of the gifts. And we will hold fast to the history that introduced the Dominican sisters to the de Young family. We will hold fast to the region that provided hope to a young Rolf Lewis after a devastating world war 
and we will hold fast to the covenant that the Lewis family now has created at this university for generations to come. Now, if you ask a member of the Lewis family why they are philanthropic, they will talk about the opportunity this region provided to them after the war and their sense that they should give back. If you ask them why Dominican, they will talk about the reasons this gift can have the greatest singular impact at this particular institution. If you ask them why health sciences, they will tell you about the importance of caring for others, of service, and of legacy. And if you ask me, as the president of Dominican, about this gift, I will tell you unequivocally that it is one of the most moving personal acts of philanthropy that I have ever seen. It is an elegant and profound definition of a legacy gift. Through a single act, a single act of generosity from one family, we will realize a better future for thousands for years to come. So to recognize that singular act of generosity, the greatest philanthropic gift in the history of Dominican University, please join me in welcoming Mr. Rolf Lewis and his wife, Valerie Hetherington. Dr. Mossy, my fellow trustees, the students of Dominican, the faculty, the ladies and gentlemen, and Valerie. Yogi Berra, many of whom you may not recall who he is, but he used to be the catcher of the New York Yankees, used to say, what comes around goes around. And that's the way I feel this very morning about standing before you, getting all this praise, all this adulation about the gift to Dominican. And I'm the one who is really very lucky to have found Dominican in the first place. And so I'm here gratefully acknowledging your thanks, but it's really my place to thank you. And while we're talking about thinking and appreciation, I need to mention my family, my family which is strongly aligned and involved in this gift to Dominican. First, there was my brother. His name was Chef Heinz, who created all this wonderful food, this wonderful food and the restaurant known as Rolf's since 1960. He made immense contribution, but he is now no longer with us. There was my other brother, George, who strongly helped in the restaurant as well. And also, there are my daughters, Jenny and Karen, who were deeply involved in the restaurant operation as very young ladies, and they really enjoyed the french fries and the hamburger at all since 1960. <laughs> and there is also Nanette, who was the gracious hostess at the restaurant and acknowledged our clients and friends, film personalities, film stars who came to the restaurant. And so she played a great role in the success of Rolf's since 1960. And let me spend a word or two about Rolf's since 1960. All of you will remember Herb Cain, who in 1960, upon coming to the opening of the restaurant, said to me, what is all this business about Rolf's since 1960? In my history, Cain said, you've got to be around 100 years before you're worthwhile mentioning. I said, Herb, I don't have that much time. <laughs> so Meadowlands 
it's a long journey, a long journey coming home. And I'm the one who is really appreciating your, ad your admiration and your gratitude, but it is up for me to be grateful. I thank Dominican for the opportunity. I look forward to Meadowlands being developed in addition to a fine institution already being a stronger institution academically, academically and um, uh, personally. So we are looking ahead to Dominican's development of Meadowlands. It may not be an easy project, but as projects go, there's ups and there are downs, there are problems to be solved. There are at times problems that are not foreseen, but with strong management and good leadership, I'm sure we'll survive those challenges as well. So I thank you for being here. I thank you for the opportunity, and it is my place to thank you again. Before I finish my remarks, I need to tell you something about a lady has come into my life many years ago. She's a strong person, she's agile, she's friendly, and can also be very, very tough. In terms of strength, she knows no superior. So let me introduce to you a lady that needs no introduction, my wife, Valerie. For For well, she's the one who led me to Dominican, this treasure of education in the first place. So thank you, Valerie, for being here. It's an honor to be, be thanked by someone who's been so generous with their gifts. And it does reinforce our responsibilities that go with the gift, I think. What we know is that while we will together craft the renovation of Meadowlands and the future of the facility and of the health sciences programs here, the long-term beneficiaries and the true beneficiaries of this gift are our students. And so I'd like to welcome a couple of students to the stage to talk a bit about the meaning of this gift. First, I'd like to welcome nursing student Michael Reyes, a senior who will be graduating next month, to come to the podium. Thank you, President Marcy, for your leadership here at Dominican and for your strong commitment to the health sciences programs. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. This gift will make such an impact here at Dominican and in our community. My name is McCole Reyes. Next month, I will be graduating from Dominican's nursing program. When I graduate, I will fulfill a dream I have had since I was a young child. I have known that nursing was a profession for me ever since I was in the second grade. My mom still has a picture I drew. It was one of those what do you want to be when you grow up projects, showing me as a nurse on the cover. I've always imagined making a career and life out of such a selfless, respectable, and rewarding field. When I was a young child, my grandfather was very ill, and my family spent countless hours in and out of the hospital and at his bedside. I come from a Latino family, so when one of our family members is ill and in the hospital, we all are in the hospital. The nurses caring for my grandfather, and also for caring for us as a family, displayed those traits that led me to want to become a nurse. Selfless, caring, and dedicated. The nurses treated my grandfather more like a family member than just a patient. At Dominican, this is how we are taught how to treat our patients. Before selecting a university, I worked for a doctor in my hometown of Fresno, California. His daughter had just graduated from Dominican's nursing program. He told me, if you want to do nursing right, and you want to graduate in four years, you have to go to Dominican University. And as I complete my last semester here at Dominican, I can say his advice was correct. Just as those nurses had treated my grandfather so kindly, 
Here too, I am treated more like, just a fam more like a family member than just a student number. This gift, so graciously given by Mr. Lewis and his family, Valerie as well, will not only amplify the Dominican learning experience, but also continue to foster this family-like relationship between faculty and student. Faculty who comprise and tirelessly built this nursing program as we know it here at Dominican, and who finally are receiving the facility that they too deserve. Thank you very much once again, Mr. Lewis, and to you and your family. Thank you. And another student, actually former student, alumni now, uh, Gina Stiers graduated this past spring with a graduate degree in occupational therapy. She currently works as an occupational therapist at Kindred Healthcare and also teaches once a week in our Department of Occupational Therapy here at Dominican. Please welcome Gina Stiers. Thank you, President. Thank you, President Marcy. <laughs> and thank you, Mr. Lewis. A few years ago, I started looking for occupational therapy programs to attend here in Northern California. While I found other options, I found that Dominican's occupational therapy program seemed that it would be the best fit for me. I knew Dominican would give me an intimate educational experience and its OT program would give me a well-rounded education and prepare me for employment. And I was right. <laughs> I had multiple employment offers right after graduation and I was employed within a month after graduating and passing my board exams. In fact, I have two jobs right now, as President <laughs> Marcy <laughs> um, stated. Um, I was so impressed by the values and sense of community that Dominican has taught me that I accepted a part-time teaching position here, and I'm, I'm so proud to still be a part of the Dominican um, community. I became an occupational therapist because the thought of helping someone maintain or become more independent seemed very fulfilling to me. I feel blessed to be able to help people stay in their homes longer or to learn how to redress themselves after surviving a stroke. I learned these skills at Dominican and Dominican has helped me connect with and touch people in need. This gift will provide a great opportunity to increase and enrich knowledge. The physical space itself is so vital and will provide an ideal learning atmosphere that will benefit faculty and a new generation of students. Again, thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis. So as, as represented by our students, what we know is that higher education is both a personal benefit and an enormous public good, whether it's at a private university or a public university. You could hear in their remarks that this is a, a benefit that is, is going far beyond individual students. But to represent the broader community, I would also like to invite Dr. Larry Meredith, Marin County's Director of Health and Human Services, to the podium. Good morning, what a morning. Thank you, uh, President Marcy, for your vision and your leadership. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, thank you for your generosity, for this historic moment that I think secures the future. Marin is the healthiest county in California, and uh, I think we're uh, not judged by us, who are all very healthy and uh, like, 
the kids at Lake Wobegon uh, above average, <laughs> but um, by the University of Wisconsin that has ranked all counties across the country. And I think uh, the, the other beauty in Marin with Dominican and our partnership with a county that has been a long-standing partnership and is growing uh, almost weekly, that we are a social laboratory for the country. What is possible in Marin, and so much is possible, can be exported across the country, across the world. And so this vision, this transformative gift, because it's wrapped around a vision of the future, I think will change not just Marin, not just California, and combined with the Affordable Care Act and health care reform, we are taking health and caring for others, uh, the, the uh, legacy of uh, generosity of spirit across the country, across the world, and will have massive political ramifications that are all positive. I mean, we've got a very low uh, uh, level. It's a low bar to go beyond where we are today. But I think we can do it, and I think with this gift, Marin will demonstrate the, the um, really the, the vision and what is possible. And again, I thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, for your generosity, the faculty, the president, the students of Dominican for being here and being with us. and. Uh, looking over the horizon to the future so together uh, we can live long, live healthy, satisfying lives. And thank you for being a, a part of this presentation. So Larry almost stole my line about Lake Wobegon. You know about Lake Wobegon and Dominican, right? We were founded by strong women. The men are pretty good looking. <laughs> the students are definitely above average. <laughs> so when I think about this gift, I think about the fact that the Lewis family came to this country and this region with virtually nothing but their lives and their energy and ambition and commitment to doing well. They have taken that opportunity and transformed it into amazing lives and wonderful accomplishments. They are now giving us a similar opportunity with much more of a jump start, but an opportunity to do more than just continue to do what we're doing very well and think deeply about the future and what is most needed for this university, for our students, and for our community. I look forward to crafting that vision with you and working closely with the Lewises as we realize the future of health sciences and the future of Dominican. Thank you all for coming, especially to our students, faculty, and staff who I know uh, were, had to take time off from classes and time, time off from their desks to come. I know that's not always a burden, but uh, I still think that it was a, a particular act and an important one. I'd like our guests at the university to come to Meadowlands. You'll be able to view the space. Our deans in health and natural sciences department chairs will talk to you about the renovation. You'll be able to see some historic uh, photos, including some Ansel Adam photos. And I'd like um, th the rest of us to depart. And in the process, please join me in thanking Mr. Lewis and his family for this historic and extraordinary act of generosity. <laughs>